We are live. Election day. Your favorite day. My favorite. No, yeah. it's actually one of my favorite days. I love election day. Um, it's one of my, my most favorite it. times to look at. I, I just love watching. One of the few times I actually love watching the news. Yeah, that's yeah. true. It's the one um, time it's on all day for me. Yep, absolutely. So uh, if you're watching this live, type L in the comments down below. That way we can make sure that you're hearing us loud and clear. If you're watching the replay, type R. Uh, today we're going to talk about something that we, we had mentioned on our team call this morning because we're starting to hear a lot of people wanting to you know, either delay their, their sell, delay their purchase. They want to see what's going to happen, whether there's a new administration or, you know, there's the same administration, what's going to happen to, to the, the real, real estate, estate market, market, right? And so, you know, looking at our numbers today, you know, and, and I was talking to a, a real estate investor yesterday who was like, I would just love to get your opinion on all this. And he's like, I'm holding off on buying. I said, why? Yeah. Right. I said, I said, there's not going to be much changing in the Dallas Fort Worth real estate market. We have so much runway left, right? The one thing that that we can see, we can look at here is the prediction and the interest rates, right? So we did post that over that is, on- yep, yep, that's interesting. We posted that over on the Good Home Team's Facebook page, so go over to that. Um, but the the prediction with mortgage rates is post, post election day, the rates are gonna go up, right? Not terribly, not terribly. No, high. we're still going to be low rates, but it's going to impact your purchasing power. So yes, I would go ahead and take advantage of the some of the most historically low rates that we have ever seen, yeah. even beating 2016. Well, let's let's talk about that right now. You you know you know an article and a report I just read is that we are we are kind of stealing some 2021 buyers because of the way the rates are. Are you seeing buyers right now? take you know buying because rates are super low is yes, that one of their 100%. motivating factors 100 percent. we're seeing buyers stay in the market because they're seeing that interest rates are low if they're needing opportunities like down payment assistance they are now able to get the down payment assistance at an interest rate that some people in the future will be soon qualifying for without any assistance whatsoever so it's such a benefit for them and without giving rates away because that's not what we can yeah do. we're not lenders what 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 are you what range if you had to give a range like recently you've seen some of this down payment assistance you know mortgage rates being <laughs> three to three and a half in that three to, in that yeah under three yeah, and a half under three and a half that's amazing yeah with right. getting five percent assistance absolutely yeah. absolutely um, DB, you know, thanks for commenting on that. Um, whoever your favorite guy is is going to win. Um, that's who I think that's going to that's going to pull it out. Um, but with that, let's talk about right now next year, 2021, right? Let's talk about misconceptions for 2021, which is I think a lot of people think inventory is about to flood the market. Yes. Don't you think? Which is also another reason some people are like, oh, I want to hold off on buying because or prices are so high right now so i want to hold off on buying because i think they're going to go down in 2021 and and i wish we could do a screen share i'm sure there's a way to do this on facebook we didn't plan Live, for but that. i did not plan for that but I, to show the graph right and, and what i showed my team this morning um when we were doing our call about this is there there's two ways to look at this one from let's go back 10 years yeah so 10 years ago the average sales price was a hundred and 83, 170, somewhere around right that there, range, yeah. right? It is now 370, 370. I think it was 379, if I yeah. remember from this morning. Um, just from just from uh, from shelter in place, the the shelter in place of Corona that happened back in March, we've seen prices go up 25, 30. In some instances, fifty thousand. And that was for re that was for resale, for and resale. for new construction, it was fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollars, right? So we're looking at this. I'm like. The amount of, of, of price appreciation that's still left, unfortunately, is there, Yeah. right? I say unfortunately because things are going to get a little bit more expensive. But the good news is if you're a home buyer, if you're a renter, or you're wanting to sell and buy, you're not at the top of the market. So we're not going to experience this, this huge price deflation that everyone right. thinks is going to happen. And then two, you're not going to experience... You know, you, you have an opportunity to build that equity. You can have some equity gain in there. Yeah. Right. Well, and exactly what you said. For people who are fearful of buying and say they want to keep renting, what do you think is going to happen to your rental rate? Yeah. I mean, rents are going to continue going up, right? right? Because as prices go up, property taxes go up. And, and these investors, these landlords, these, these multifamily apartment complex holders, need they have to 
to spread that across. So we're going to see naturally that going up. That also increases right. the value of that apartment complex or that rental. And and two, we have low our inventory levels are still continuing to go down. It's nuts. Mm -hmm. We have in pre in the pre owned market there was one point seven one point seven months of inventory. In in new construction, it was under two. All all combined is like one point eight to one point nine months of inventory, which is so low it's not even funny once again we thought we had the hottest real estate market i would say 2016 2017 and we're sitting at lower inventory now than we were then yeah yeah absolutely so i mean this is this is where i'm saying that if you look at our gap we've historically for the past since 2014 we've historically been bouncing around the actually 2013 right around that three months of inventory so right. It's gone a little bit under three months, then, oh, yep. then a little bit higher than, you know, right at maybe four, but it's, it's stayed in between that range, right? right. So, so, you know, we're not going to see this huge shoot up in inventory, which is the number of houses available for sale. We're just not going to see that. Right. Right. Even during the Great Recession, 08, 09, 2010, 2011, it wasn't until 2011 that we saw almost nine months of inventory. Right. 2009 and 10, so actually 2010, it was four months. Yeah. Then we saw that huge shoot up. So when that started to happen. It's not an immediate thing. Yes, it's not immediate. So we're not going to see that. We're, we've been hearing some some homeowners and some buyers saying, oh, I'm going to wait till there's, there's this flood of inventory. It's just not going to well, happen. Well, and that's where you want to talk and collaborate with an agent who not only can help actually give you the facts and the data of what's happened in the past, because I think we all know that that can be a great predictor of what's going to happen again in the future. But then like being partnered with someone like Nick um, and being on his team, I also now have that experience of him actually going through the 08 recession um, and what that did to the housing market and what that looked like so that you can talk about what kind of changes are going to happen and what's the likelihood, which is exactly what we're saying now, that it's just not going to be most likely this flood of inventory that's happening. The one thing that we think is going to change is that interest rates may rise a little bit, yep. but yep. Um, you want to take advantage of that before they do. Also, buying at the end of the year, by the way, tends to be cheaper for you as a buyer. You have, um, sometimes your closing costs can be a little bit less. Yep. Um, unless you go new construction and sometimes that can actually be higher but that's a whole other but you can actually you can work that in right yeah so... you can you can so it is typically better to buy it this time of year and then i would go to take advantage of that before the rates go up too yeah so let's look at this as a whole right in dallas fort worth you know let's let's just let's just say let's just go with who, whomever wins the presidency let's go with a biden let's okay. say biden wins right now let's go with what the national polls are saying uh regardless of whether you agree with it or not but let's say a Biden presidency wins. Here's what's happening, and in, in, in our opinion, and in, in what we believe it's, is is going to to play out is that Texas is going to actually be even more of a hotspot for uh, for jobs and for companies and for for um, people that are leaving these higher cost of living states because taxes will increase, right? right. So these these higher paying jobs or these people that are making higher incomes. Are, are going to prediction is that they would leave those higher income states and coming to Texas. So what is that going to do? That's going to cause more demand, mm -hmm. right? More demand, less inventory, prices continue to rise up. Yeah. If Trump stays and, and wins re-election, I mean, We're I think still it's still a relocation spot for companies. Yes. <laughs> yep. And so that's why there's so much more runway left on this. And you need to be taking advice from somebody who's actually from your real estate professionals who's actually studying this market. Well, study the market. And once again, if the numbers work, the numbers work. For you to sell right in the future, you have to buy right now. And that's where you need an agent advising you along the way based off doing an analysis for you, helping you like understand this entire process, these numbers that we're talking about. Also, if you're on the fence of like buying versus renting, having someone do, truly do a breakdown for you of the wealth you're going to start building by buying versus thinking, oh no, I don't want, I don't know what I'm getting into. I'm going to try and yep. time the market. It's, it's pretty Im incredible what you're going to do. So sometimes don't overthink spending a little bit more on your home versus the wealth you're actually going to be building through buying that property. 100%. So Look, if you're thinking, like, let's say you want to go and do an analysis on your home. You're thinking about, you're wanting to sell. You also want to buy, right? You're a little bit concerned about, about selling and buying in this market. We've got solutions for you, right? Let's also say that maybe you're a landlord and unfortunately you've got a tenant who's not paying. We've right. got solutions for you with that about being able to help you buy that property out. 
right? Because unfortunately, because there's the eviction moratoriums are still in place, you can't evict that person, that tenant, through at least the end of the year. Yeah, we don't know what's happening beyond that. Right, and so we've got solutions. If you're a home buyer, first time home buyer, but 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 you've got the good credits, you've got you've got the incomes, right? I said credits again because I I said it this morning. I said it this morning, and and now it's sticking in my yeah. You know, uh, because it is three companies that you're getting credits for from. Uh, (laughs) So from that. But you don't have the down payment all the way. Let's look at down payment assistance. Yeah. Right? Let's see what we can do to help. Let's put a plan in place. Yeah. It's fine if you're not ready at this moment, but let's let's get ready so that you can actually make this happen. 100%. Talked with someone yesterday to do that, and we're coming up with a whole strategy for her. Yep. So you can go to elizabethaustin.work, elizabethaustin.work, to find out more information. You can reach out to her. Uh, her number will be in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. Her her. Uh, if you go to, again, Elizabeth Austin at work, all our information is there. Or make a comment down below and we'll get you all set up on that. And then we'll see you next week after uh, after everything plays out today. Yeah. All right. Have a great day.